I again welcome you to this course on fundamental mechanics. In the last class, we have been talking about the moment of a force, and today we again will be discussing the uh, moment of a sorry moment of a couple. And today again we will be discussing the moment of a couple. Now, as far as the moment of a couple is concerned, the definition of the moment of couple we have given in the last class, and as far as the definition from the textbook is concerned, the moment of a couple first of all we define what we mean by the couple when two equal and opposite forces are acting on a body they set, they are said to constitute kind of the couple now in order to find the moment of the couple uh, there are two ways of finding the moment of the couple like first of all we define the radius vector between the two forces the cross product of the radius vector with one of the forces gives us the magnitude of the moment okay so scalar formulation will be if we multiply the magnitude of the force with the perpendicular distance between the two forces that is force into force arm this is the scalar formulation because this is the magnitude of force and this is simply the distance between the two forces perpendicular distance therefore it will only give us the magnitude and not the direction therefore this formulation is called the scalar formulation now apart from the scalar formulation we have the vector formulation which is we obtain the moment of a force in terms of the radius vector between the two forces and the force vector the cross product between the uh, radius uh, the cross product between the radius vector between the two forces and the force itself is what we call as the moment since this is a cross product and we know the cross product between two vectors is also a vector so that's why this is called the vector formulation the difference between the scalar formulation and the vector formulation is in scalar formulation you only obtain the magnitude of the moment while as in vector formulation you obtain the magnitude as well as the direction we will go ahead with few more problems to understand how we obtain the moment of a couple and let me you know explain you how this problem has been solved and how you have to solve the problems which are based on this concept now as far as this question is concerned it says that this question says we have to determine the mom couple moment we have to determine the couple moment acting on the pipe shown in this figure segment ab is segment ab is directed 30 de 30 degree below the xy plane this is something you know first we need to understand uh, what is the configuration of our system on which the couple is acting as far as the system is concerned we are having a system which is composed of two pipes we are having pipe one we are having pipe two and these two pipes are connected with the help of an elbow joint okay so we have an elbow joint between the two point between the two pipes so if you look at uh, this joint since uh, this this arrangement of two pipes which are being connected by an elbow joint have been fixed with a bush here Okay, we are having, uh, we are having, uh, uh, what we call as a cylindrical joint here, threaded joint here, and on this threaded joint, we are this is a thread joint between this fixed point, fixed portion, and this assembly. Okay, so if you look, if you this 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 joint, as far as this assembly is concerned, this L is concerned, this L is free to rotate about this joint. Okay, so you can simply move it up. You can turn it you can turn it like this or you can turn it like downwards okay so we have different ways of uh, moving this up or moving this down now the question is that as far as this assembly is concerned of two pipes and an elbow joint it is subjected to forces a force of 25 pound is acting at point b and a force of 25 pound is acting at point a the, the two forces which are acting on this assembly uh, are equal forces 20 this is a force of uh, you know 25 pound acting along z direction this is a force of 25 pound acting along minus z direction the magnitude of the two forces is same but their directions are opposite so we say that they constitute the couple and the perpendicular distance between the two is this distance the perpendicular distance between the two forces between the line of action of these forces is this so if you happen to draw the perpendicular distance between the two the perpendicular distance will be this distance okay this is the perpendicular distance between these two forces okay since this is given to us that the portion ab does not lie on the xy plane it lies at an angle 30 degree beneath the plane okay now the question is very simple that we have to find we have to determine the magnitude of the moment now in order to de determine the magnitude of the moment first of all we use the vector formulation we know as far as the moment of uh, as far as the moment 
of uh, the couple is concerned the moment of the couple is given as moment of the couple is equal to r cross f it's equal to r cross f okay now as far as this r is concerned this r is the radius vector from one of the forces to another force whose magnitude is f so what we will be doing as far as this uh, 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 this uh, what you call as the moment is concerned how we find it we have various ways of doing it okay in fact as far as we have three different ways of doing it which are in fact equivalent uh, to each other uh, we can first of all uh, first let, let's do it through two different ways okay first of all you find the mo moment of this 25 pound force uh, about an axis passing through point o okay that is find the moment of this force then again uh, draw the radius vector from this point to point b okay find the moment add up the two moments we'll get the uh, we'll get the total moment okay we'll get the total moment of the couple that is i mean to say what we will be doing first of all draw the radius vector from point o to this point a okay and from point o draw the radius vector to point b like this okay so first of all let's call this vector as let's say this is our let's call this this we call as this is radius vector ra and let's call this radius vector as let's call this radius vector as rb okay first of all we will be finding the uh, we'll be finding the force we'll be finding the moment of this 25 pound force about point o when the radius vector is r a therefore its moment will be moment of this 25 pound force will be moment of we'll call this as moment one that will be equal to r a the radius vector from this point to this point its magnitude is eight inch so we'll write this as this is eight and it's along y axis so we'll write this as this is eight j cap okay cross product with 25 pound force this is 25 pound force and this 25 pound force is acting along negative z direction okay because that direction is upwards this is acting along negative z direction so we'll write this as this is minus k cap okay so this is minus so this is the moment of this is the moment of this 25 pound force about an axis passing through point o that is equal to 25 multiplied by 8 is to uh, 200 so we'll write this is 200 now we have j cross k okay in order to find it we write it cyclic form we write i j k okay so we can write this as this is j cap i cap and k cap now when you are writing c when you write i cross j it's equal to k when you write j cross k it's equal to i when we write k cross i it's equal to j okay so take this minds out now we have j cross k when you take j cross k we are going in the opposite direction okay this direction you take as once you are going in a cyclic form uh, i cross j it will be k j cross k it's i k cross i is, is equal to j in the cyclic form if you go in the acyclic form that is if you take j cross i it will be equal to minus k okay so since you are taking j cross k now we are going from j to k so it is j cross k we are going in cyclic way so j cross k is equal to i okay so this is equal to i cap okay so it means as far as the uh, moment of force is concerned the moment of this force is equal to uh, moment of this force uh, 25 pound force about this about an axis passing through point a is 200 i cap now we find the moment of this 25 pound force whose radius vector is rb we'll write this as m2 and be careful once we are writing these moment and vectors if you write them in the bold letters it indicates that they are the vector quantities m2 will be equal so it will be equal to rb cross f now this is you know this is rb cross f okay so once we are trying once we write rb cross f as far as this rb is concerned it is the radius vector from point o to point b how do you write this radius vector we can write it as first of all let's uh, find out the what are the coordinates of uh, 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 coordinates of uh, this coordinates of point o from where we are drawing this vector its coordinates are 0 0 and 0 so it 
this is the origin. Now let's try to find out what are the coordinates of uh, coordinates of point B. As far as the coordinates of point B are concerned, first we find its x coordinate. As far as its x coordinate is concerned, that is x coordinate is the distance from here to here. Okay, that is the distance from here to here will be its x coordinate. Okay, now this distance. Look at this right angular triangle. I mean to say, look at uh, look at this right angular triangle. This one. Okay, this one. This is the right angular triangle. In this right angular triangle, as far as your hypotenuse is concerned, it is equal to six. Therefore, as far as the base is concerned, this will be equal. This base will be equal six cos thirty. Okay, six cos of thirty degree. Okay, so it is. It it simply means. It simply means as far as the x coordinate of point B is concerned, the x coordinate of point B is six cos thirty. Okay. In order to move. In order to reach to point B, when we say x coordinate, in order to reach to point B, okay, along x axis, if you have to reach to point B, along x axis, okay, in order to reach to point B along x axis, how much distance we have to travel? We have to travel a distance from this point to this point along x axis, or from this point to this point along x axis. Since this is a parallelogram at the top on the x-y plane, uh, this, it, the distance of point B along x-axis, the x-coordinate of point B is same as the distance between A and B. That's equal to 6 cos 30. Now, how much is its y-coordinate? In order to reach to point B, how much distance we have to travel along y-axis? We have to travel a distance from this point to this point, okay? Or from this point to this point, okay? So it's, it's equal to 8j cap. So it will be 8j cap will be its y-coordinate. Now, as far as its z coordinate is concerned, now we have moved along x axis, we have moved this distance along y direction, we have moved this di direction. Now, how much we have to move along z direction? We have to move this direction, we have to move this distance, okay, in negative sense, okay, in downwards along minus z. So, this is your this distance is 6, your this distance is 6 cos 30, therefore, this distance has to be 6 sine 30, as we know from our earlier classes that how we resolve the forces. This is six sine thirty, but this is in the ne negative direction. It will be, uh, it will be minus six sine thirty. So this we can write as. So this is, rub it. So this will be. Minus six, sine, of thirty. Okay, so this is down. So this is my, uh, this is my z coordinate. Now how do we write the vector? Uh, now we have to write the vector from. Uh, we have to draw the vector from a to b again the radius vector that we had already drawn and we can write now this radius vector 6 cos 30 minus 0 along x axis 8 minus 0 along j cap and minus 6 sine 30 minus 0 along k cap therefore as far as rb is concerned from this formula as far as our rb is concerned our rb will be equal to 6 cos 30 6 cos 30 i cap 6 cos 30i cap and along j cap it's equal to uh, plus 8j cap minus 6 sin 30k cap 6 sin of 30k cap this is our this is our radius vector rb and we have to take its cross product with f as far as f here is concerned if you look at f now as far as the f is concerned, the f is 25 pounds along z axis. So we'll write this as cross product with 25 pound of force, 25 pound of force along z direction, that is k cap. Okay. Now solve it. You can solve it with the help of the, uh, with the by just writing its uh, determinant or whatever, but you can also simply take the cross product. Uh, you can write, see, this is 6 cos 30 cross product with. 25 k cap okay and the unit of force is pound so you have to be very careful about the units and the unit of the distances are in inch okay so once you are taking the product the moment will be in the form of the unit of the moment will be pound inch okay so this is 6 cos 30 multiplied by 25 so this 25 into 30 is 150 so this will be 150 cos 30 cos of 30 and you have 
I cross K. Look here. As far as I cross I cross K is concerned, you are coming in acyclic form. I cross K will be equal to minus J. So this is minus J K. Okay. Then we have 8 into 25. That is 8 into 25 is 200. Okay. And this is J cross K. As far as J cross K is concerned, that's equal to I. Okay. J cross K, your J cross K is equal to I. So it will be plus I cap. And you have 6 sine 30 K cap cross 25 K cap. K cross K is equal to 0. Therefore, this term will go. Therefore, this is pound inch. Okay. So this is the moment M2. And this is the moment because of the force. This is the moment because of the force 25 pound. Therefore, as far as the total moment is concerned, the total moment will be equal to the summation of the two. That is M1 plus M2. That is if you add to this moment, if you add a moment of 200 I cap, this is your but minus 200 I cap. So this is minus 200 I cap. Add up the two moments, 200 I cap. Okay. So this moment and this, sorry, this component and this component will cancel. The total moment will be 150 into cos 30 J cap. So that is equal to the total moment is equal. The total moment M is equal. M comes out equal 150 cos 30. That comes out equal to minus 130. Okay. And it's along J cap. This is J cap. And you have the unit of moment is will be in the form of pound inch. So this is one way of doing this question. Okay. This is one way of doing this question in order to find the moment. Draw the uh, radius vectors RA and RB. Find RA, find RB. Take the individual moments, add them up. That will be the total moment of this. Uh, a moment of the couple. Okay. Okay. Minus 6. Sign 30. Minus 6 sin 30. This is K cap. Cross product with 25 K cap. Okay. Be careful about the units. Your unit of distance is inch. Unit of force is pound. So the total unit will be pound inch. And now look here. So this will be 6 cos 30 multiplied by 25. So this is 25 into 6 is 150 cos 30, 150 cos 30. And as far as I cross K is concerned, again, this is I, this is J, this is K cap. Okay. As far as your I cross K is concerned, I cross K is equal to minus J. So this is minus J cap. Okay. And you have 6 sine 30 K cap cross 25 K cap, K cap cross K cap is 0. So this will be 150 cos 30 J cap. That's equal to again, that's equal to minus 130 uh, J cap pound inch. So this is how you do it. Okay. So the same result has again been obtained. That is, if you simply select one of the force, okay, and draw the radius from another force, take the cross product between the radius vector and the force, selected force, you will again get the moment of the couple. This is one more way of doing it. Okay. So these are both the ways of uh, solving the moment of a couple using the vector formulation. Now, as far as the scalar formulation is concerned, we know from the scalar formulation, moment of the couple is equal to force multiplied by the perpendicular distance between the two forces. The force that we have, we have a force of 25 pound. And as far as the perpendicular distance between the two forces is concerned, that is this much. Okay. And this distance is equal, this distance, as we know, it's equal to 6 cos 6 cos 30 okay so multiply with 6 cos 30 you will again get the same result as you have obtained from the previous two vector formulation method okay so this is the way of solving these types of questions you can select any of the vector formulation method or if you are asked to solve it through scalar formulation you can do it through scalar formulation method okay